Hello, welcome back to another How to Bloke. Uh, today we're going to make some chicken, pot roasted chicken, you know. Uh, but the, the, not so much, this is not so much about the chicken, the, the bird, the chicken. This is about the gravy, really, too. More, a bit more, really. So the emphasis is on the gravy. So how do you get gravy from a roast with no problem, no sweat? I'll show you. You don't have to use, you have to go and buy these uh, well-known, probably, and not so well-known packet mixes or um, pots of things, you know, gra uh, gravy granules or anything like that. You don't have to do that. No, no, no. Waste of money. And they don't taste as good. So, there you are. So, what we're going to do, there's the chicken we're going to do. There's the bird. And this is going to make our gravy here. This, 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 and this. So you need a couple of onions and a couple of apples. Now you could have carrots as well, but I haven't got any. So, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make a trivet. Now, some of you people watching this, you say, I know what a trivet is. It's one of these. Yeah, that's what we used to use in the old days. Yeah, the old days. The old, the old days, you could, probably, now, so. you could probably play this, you know, ding, ding, ding. But this is a trivet, we're not going to use one of these. Forget it, put it in, no, don't put it in a bin, but we don't use them anymore. They, they're gone. We're going to use a trivet, we're going to make our own trivet of vegetables. So, what vegetables then? Well, today I haven't got any carrots, so we'll have to use, just use some, uh, some apples. So here, just take the cores out. And um, we're going to use some apples and onions. You can use carrots, you can use oh, any any root vegetable really. Um, parsnips? Parsnips, yep, yeah, you could use parsnips. Although parsnips are a bit, depending on the way you are, they're a bit too, they're a bit, have too much of a, a particular flavour and or are too expensive. I hear they're expensive to buy, but certainly, um, oh, what do you call it? Turnip? Turnip. Uh, Swede. Uh, carrots, I've mentioned carrots. <laughs> yeah, because carrots have got kind of a neutral flavour. They have, you can. Carrots have got to have a good flavour as well. So you don't want an overpowering flavour with a gravy, but you need some sort of flavour. And uh, you, you can generate that by using vegetables. And fruit. I mean, if you wanted a bit, a bit uh, tangy, you could put a little bit of orange in there or something. But we'll keep it simple for today. So once you get the hang of this, then you'll be able to uh, do your own kind of mix, gravy mix, if it were. Um, but of course, this is just a basic, a basic way. We're not going to do anything fancy with this today. Now we're not going to add any. Well, we might add some red wine. I'll see. You don't have to. Let's make it red wine free or white wine free. So what we do is get the, get the uh, thing like that. And what you going to do with this onion? Do it, do it this way around like that. So big, chunky slices like that. So that chicken's got something to sit on, you see? When it's cooking. All right. We'll just do that with the onion. See how fast it is, that? It takes no time at all. So you don't have to use that trivet thing I showed you earlier on, ladies and gentlemen, you just use this. You're probably saying, nah, it's not gonna make some good gravy. I prefer, you know, the stuff out of a packet. Well, all right then, we'll use that. But I'm just saying, until you've tried this, you wouldn't know how easy and tasty it is. So, chunky, chunky, uh, chunky slices of onion. Right, so camera lady, if you could just zoom in there, please. That's the, that's the thing, that's what we're going to rest the chicken on, okay? Now, you could use some something in the shape of this, like that, the cruze. Which is kind of that shape, you know. But I would, what I would say, the bigger the... The bigger the, don't put that, don't buy some a pot for the oven that just fits that chicken. Get one bigger because you need that to make the, to baste the chicken and stuff. So the bigger the pot, the better it is to, to, to not a massive thing, but get the biggest uh, Le Creuset you can afford or biggest pot. Like Today I'm using this one, okay? So, so uh, but with the chicken in there, when it's after it's been cooked, you want to be able to have enough room so it slides to the side, and you can pick up the juice from there and baste the chicken with it. Okay, so that's in fact sat in there too tight. You'd you'd have a problem. You'd have to 
Difficult, try and, yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? So you get my point. Yeah. So okay, so that's that's that. So we're gonna put the chicken in now, okay? So always wash your chicken before you put it in there, you know, make sure it's got no bits and pieces on it from uh, when it's been processed. So just wipe your hands after touching the chicken. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this now? Again, we're gonna keep it basic today. No funny business, no fancy business. We're gonna put in, we're gonna go in with some mustard. How much was this Dijon mustard? This is a strong one, this one. Doesn't have to be strong. I'm just saying, this is good stuff. Get, um, get a spoon, big spoon like that, and slather it on. You don't have to do it with your hands. You can do it with a spoon just as well. Get in all of, in, uh, the grooves there, like that. That's that, see? And then, so it's good. got a good layer on there. Don't, don't worry, it's not going to taste it. The taste of the mustard is always there when you, after you've cooked it, but it's not overpowering. Right, this is garlic. This is the liquid garlic. I'll show you that like that. Like a paste. Garlic paste, yeah. And you can use that, or you can use uh, garlic powder, or you can use some sort of garlic fresh, granules. Fresh garlic. Fresh garlic, yeah. Okay. But you don't, you don't. Again, you quite. You can stick the garlic in, in there, for, and cloves of garlic in there if you want. But today we're just going to go like this. We're going to go get a teaspoon of garlic like that, a wallop. <coughs> never, never put the. After you rub the chicken, never put it back in there. Use a new spoon. Okay, so don't put the the, the the spoon you've used to rub the stuff in back into the pot. That's not good. So, because um, the bacteria from the chicken or whatever is going to go in this, back into your jar, and that's not good. So, right there we are. That's that. Now what else? Some pepper, black pepper. Uh, salt, not at this stage. No, we're not going to put any salt in because I might add a stock cube later on um, to to make the gravy go. But normally I don't, but you can leave the salt out. It's assume too much salt in your cooking. You're going to put salt in the potatoes, and you, don't don't cook it with. I don't cook it with salt anyway. Normally, so right. This is going to go in the oven. The secret here to getting this this chicken is to uh, is to bang it in the oven on high for 45 minutes. That's what you've got to do. Okay, to get it off. So don't put it on low, right low, put it, bang it on high. A pot roasted chicken, bang it on high. So I'm gonna put the lid on like that. And it's gonna go in the oven. In a minute, I'll turn this on for 45 minutes. And we'll come back and have a look. Okay, Hello, we're back after 45 minutes. And let's get the old bird out. Oy. Let's have a look at this. Right, this is chicken after 45 minutes, right? On max, on max, the hottest the oven will go. See how that's caramelising there, it's going all brown? Good isn't it? Yeah. Right, what we're going to do now, is just pop it to one side and get what little water there is, juice as it were, what little juice there is, it's quite a bit really, and we're just going to plonk it over there. You mean baste it? Baste it, that's it, yeah that's the word, that's a technical word. Just plonk it. Plonk it over there, baste it. I think I, I can't. I can't be bothered to do all that. You know, it's too much like well, hard work. I just want to bang it in. Well, don't because this will taste much better like this. Now, have a look at that. The juice there. That's the water from the chicken and the vegetables. That we can add a little bit more now. Just a little bit more. Just a splash, as they say in the movies. Right. So just a splash. Now this is how much a splash is. Ready? There we are. Not much, is it? So, you're thinking, well, okay, what's this, I had a bloke going to do with it now? Well, he's going to put the lid on back on again, and this time it's going to go on a moyen oven. Uh, moyen, that means medium. So, about 100, I don't know, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, I don't, don't talk old money anymore. New money, centigrade, right, it's about 125, 130 degrees, right? Maximum, it is 250 degrees, so half that, so half what it should be. So stick your oven on half, around about 125, um, 130 degrees, and then you'll bug it back in. For how long? We're going to bug it back in for another hour. Okay. Right, one hour. So, bug it back in. That's it, and we're back in an hour after that. See you soon. Oh, we're back uh, after another hour. This 
Last hour has been on a medium, so 125, 130 degrees. So it's just like a boiling point. So we're going to get the bird out now. Let's see what we've got. See what we've got. So it's kind of getting to walk to the point now. It's going to be almost cooked, really. It's a 1.3 kilo uh, chicken, or there and thereabouts. So now you can see that it's still got some. It's still got some juice in there. See, what you don't want to do really is boil it away because it's not so good. You're going to get enough juice for the gravy, kind of. So what we're going to do now is going to baste this chicken again. And you can see the, the colour starting to develop on the skin. If you don't do this, the chicken is not going to taste as good. It's going to look anemic. And it, people wouldn't enjoy as much, as simple as that. It'll be dry as well, wouldn't it? Sorry, pardon It'll me? It'll be dry as well. Yeah, it'll be dry, yeah, of course, yeah, forgot that. And the flavour there is in that juice. And you're thinking, well, what's the point of doing that? Because the juice will just run off the back of the chicken. No, it soaks in. It soaks in, and, and you'll see the difference. If you made one, you made two, side by side, and one you basted, and one you didn't baste, then you'll see the difference. You taste, see and taste the difference. Now that, that looks interesting, doesn't it, to eat. Mm. If you had one that uh, looked a bit pale and that, it wouldn't be so good. Right, how do you test it's done? Well, you get a big knife like this, and you stick it through the leg. Should go through without any, any issues at all. Yeah, look at that. See, easy, look. Okay, bit. so that's, that's done. Um, now, what you can do now, that's a little bit, it's a little bit warm, is you can take it out and you can just put it on one of these uh, oven tray things um, like this. It's falling apart. Oh, it's falling apart here. Just get a bigger spoon. I always prefer chicken that's slightly uh, uh, over, not overdone, but done more than it should be because I I hate. Um, Fighting with the, the the chicken bones, getting the meat off the chicken bones. So, but the meat should fall off, in my opinion. But there we are. So, there we have it. You can keep that warm. Don't cook it anymore. It doesn't need to be cooked. Uh, you can put some foil over the top of that, like that, and keep that warm just to like uh, 60, 70 degrees centigrade. So not not actually 100 degrees. So not boiling kind of thing. And that keep warm for ages and ages. So that's what we're going to do tonight, because it's only five o'clock now, so I've got to keep this warm until seven, so I'm going to put some foil over it in a minute. But the point of this is the gravy bit, the gravy bit. So what we're left with, these are potatoes I'm having to, we're having tonight, by the way. So they're having, we're going to, I'm going to mix those with onion and some broccoli. Anyway, I'll stop talking about that now. So this is the, the gravy bit of it. So. What we're going to do here now in here we've got what's left of the apple and um, the onion of course now there's two ways you can approach this two ways three ways really but now see that see that um, black stuff around here that's all flavor so what we're going to do is add a bit of water add a bit of water to that we're going to put the pan on to get that water boiling. Okay. So I'm just going to cut the camera until it boils. Okay, but we're back now. We've got this um, got this uh, mixture of uh, boiling. Now, what you need to do at this point is go around the side of the pan like this with a spoon or a spatula and get all that black stuff off. That black stuff is all flavour, and you need that in your gravy. Well, you don't have to get it all off. Get most of it off. Get off what you can. Might take a little while, but it's worth it. So in here, don't forget, you've got the the, the uh, tomato, tomatoes. You've got the apples, and you've got the onion. What's left of those two? So you know, you haven't got a stop cube in here. Uh, I don't think today we're going to put one in. We should need one. You can if you want. Still put a chicken stock cube in 
if it makes you feel happy. Right, now we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to mash it with a potato masher like this, see? Whilst it's still boiling. So we go in there, with the potato masher. Okay. So, keep let it, let it boil, keep boiling it. This will be. Looks lovely. Your gravy. You're saying you're thinking that's too thick, and people won't have it. Well, okay then. So you can do something about that. You can get yourself one of these things if you haven't got one already, and then go in there and blitz it. I'm sure you know how to do that. If you've got one of these, you know how to do that. Or you can sieve it with one of these things. You can put that in there and sieve it. It's okay. To make a really fine gravy, but I can't be bothered. And, and the reason I can't be bothered is because I take away all the taste and all the fun because it's rustic. This is rustic. Rustic gravy. Yeah, it is rustic gravy, and uh, let's keep it that way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to. If you don't think that's thick enough, say say you want making gravy for say four or five people, and you're all gravy holics. Gravy holics. You just put some water in there, like that. So now the gravy's thinner. You see, like that. Yeah. I, I like my gravy like that, not too rustic, not too right. thin. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what to do. It's just to, to show you. I don't, we don't really need to do it, but I'll show you. So if the gravy's thin like that, so bring it back up to the boil again. Put a ring on hot gas on full or whatever, bring it up to the boil. Then we're going to get a teaspoon of this corn flour. One teaspoon like that, a heap teaspoon. And we're going to get some cold water. It has to be cold, isn't it? Yeah, it has to be cold water. Cold, a little bit of cold water in there, not a lot, just a little bit. Like that much called cold water, so that's what, just a, a splash, look, you can see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it makes sure all, all the all the uh, grains are all yeah, it's all mixed together, and then what we're going to do. Sorry, that chicken looks so good. I keep wanting to film just the chicken. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think you get much movement out of it. It's uh, it's past that point. Right, so what you're going to do with this, this this, um, this teaspoon of corn flour, is you're going to plonk it in like that. See, wallop. So now with corn flour, with flour, what you have to do is you've got to cook it out. Now, what does that mean? Well, you've got to bring it up to the boil and make sure that the sauce doesn't thicken anymore and get and, and adjust the water. So that takes a little bit of time to do. But if you don't do that, what happens is, is that sauce, if you just plonked it in, the sauce would, might get incredibly thick. You could cut it with a knife because this will set solid, you know. It's, uh, it thickens gravy amongst other things. Uh, its functions is to thicken gravy. So uh, it's um, you've got to you've got to, if you use it, you do it properly. So just waiting for this to uh, get thicker, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we put the the corn flour in. Now we're just going to bring it up to the boil, and just boil it for a few moments to make sure that the sauce doesn't thicken. That's about the consistency you need for gravy. That's quite a lot. If you make too much, no big deal. Freeze some. You can let it cool down and freeze it. So. That smells amazing. Yeah. It's not going to taste the same if you blitz it, whether it's this thing or another machine or a liquidizer or something. But it's not going to, I don't think it's going to taste the same if you sieve it. Because what you're doing is you're sieving out the onion bits and the apple bits. So, but it's still going to taste great, you know? So if you want perfect, super smooth, silky gravy, use a sieve, or use, or use that, or use both. But in this house, we like it rusty like that. And we like to do it just like that. Now, red wine, white wine, red wine. All right, so you're having chicken. So what white wine would go with that. Doesn't really matter. Well, so any old white old, uh, any, any old plonk, white plonk will do. So, now is the time to put it in. So you put a little bit in. I haven't got any at the moment, but 
you just put a splash in half a cup or a whole cup but the important, important thing is is make sure that you boil off the alcohol because it what happen is if you serve it up without doing that it, it's a gravy will taste of alcohol wine it won't have the right it'll taste horrible and you guess we'll go oh no, no I don't like this so if you're going to do this for the first time stick to what I'm doing now right just do the apple or the onion or, or, or just the onion that that would be okay Get it so, so you know what to do, and then you can experiment after that. You see a little bit of wine in there, yep, a little bit of, you know, maybe a stock cube or something. But seriously, you don't need it. This is this is it. So, without further ado, that's all ready to rock and roll. That sauce hasn't got any thicker there. That's perfect. So that's a lot of gravy there. That's enough for eight people at least there. So, but we like our gravy in this house. Yeah. And uh, so there we are. So I'm just going to turn that down. This uh, was, we're serving up later on, so this chicken here I'm going to cover with foil and just keep it warm. No, no, don't heat it up, just warm it, keep it warm. And then when it's time to serve, you've got the gravy there. The gravy is going to obviously heat the gravy up. Don't be too worried about the chicken because all the time that is resting, it's going to get more flavour in it. And the longer you rest it to a point, the more flavour that chicken is going to be absolutely superb in, two, in a couple of hours. Don't worry about it being not hot as well, because you, the gravy's hot, the potatoes will be hot, the broccoli will be hot, so there'll be loads of hot things. So, and the chicken won't be cold, it'll be, you know, 60, 70 degrees or, or, or more, so it won't, be, it won't be cold. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this chicken, and importantly it's the gravy bit that's, that this video's about. Hope you like it, give, it, give this gravy a go, and you, you, I'll tell you what, you'll never ever touch the old um, gravy granules or powder ever, ever again. Works every time, and uh, it's free gravy kind of thing. Yeah. So I've got some more recipes up here. I've got some quick tips up here. I've got some uh, DIY jobbies down here. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, how to blog, get that's the, and then hit the hit the thing and hit the like button and give us all that sort of stuff. So until next time. <laughs>